What are the inner workings of an athlete's brain as they step onto the world stage? And what happens when competition causes them to crumble? That's what a pair of professors from Johns Hopkins University are researching, the mind of a medalist. They both join me this morning. Christopher Fetch is an assistant professor of neuroscience and Vikram Chib is an assistant professor of biomedical engineering. They're both in Baltimore, Maryland. Good morning. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning. Professor Fetch, let's start with you. Uh, how is an elite athlete's brain different from us? <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to, to imagine that their brain um, through training or um, just development and, and just being having good genes is, is able to more efficiently take in sensory information and convert that information into evidence that bears on a set of possibilities, which is essentially a decision. And that decision process is likely more efficient um, and uh, more accurate than, than, uh, than the decisions that, that we make. So is it innate or is this something that you can be conditioned to be? I think it's a little of both. Um, I suspect there are predispositions uh, that people have that to become uh, uh, very quick decision makers uh, on the athletic field, but it definitely owned and strengthened uh, through training, just as the muscles are strengthened through training. I think connections in the brain um, get, uh, get shaped by all the hours that they spend uh, in the gym and on the field. Right. Professor Chib, we're days away from the start of the games, of course. Pressure is mounting for these athletes. In your research, how does an athlete's brain respond under that pressure? Yeah, so what, what we've looked at in my lab is sort of how you process the stakes that are on the line when, when you're performing a task. And what we found is that when you first think about the task that you're performing and the goal that you have to win, you, you think of it as what you have to win. But then when you're actually doing the task, the thing that sort of corrupts your brain activity and causes you to choke under pressure is you being worried about losing that that possible victory. And that worry about loss can cause you to choke under pressure. So it's the fear, it sounds like, of losing. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's that's what, what we think. There's this idea of loss aversion, basically how much you value losses relative to equal magnitude gains. And what we found is that depending on somebody's loss aversion, um, we can actually predict who is going to choke under pressure in our lab setting um, and, and who won't. Hmm. Professor Fetch, you've mentioned that it looks very effortless what the athletes are doing, but in reality, the brain is faced with a tough computational challenge. How are Olympians able to make split-second decisions? Right, so that one of the biggest challenges faced by the brain uh, when you know taking in information from the senses and trying to make a quick decision is that this information can uh, can differ in its degree of reliability. So one source of information, say from the eyes, um, might be highly reliable, and another source of information, say you're hearing things around you and and or you're using your sense of touch, inputs can can change in their degree of reliability from moment by moment, and the brain has to assess that reliability. So that it knows which source of information to put more trust in, which more which final decision. And so I, I suspect that athletes' brains are optimized to assess that reliability of evidence uh, when they make these these quick uh, quick decisions. Huh. And Professor Chib, when the stakes are high, you know we've all seen it happen. Some athletes buckle under the pressure; they choke. What can yes. they do to prevent that? Well, what you can do if, if these worries about loss are, are coming into play, what you can do is sort of reframe the way you think about the situation. So using cognitive strategies to sort of prepare yourself for the possible loss, to sort of think to yourself, look, I, I can do it. Getting in the right frame of mind can help you when you're actually performing your, your sport to sort of calm your mind and, and do better under pressure. What about visualization? I mean, I think of Michael Phelps and he has the headphones on. You remember that scene, right? And he's just in the zone. How much does that play into your, your game and what you end up doing? Yeah, so that, that, that can be a, a, a way to frame things as well. So framing in terms of thinking about the scenario and you going through your sport can help you sort of prepare. And that preparation in your mind can then sort of calm your brain activity. Um, so to speak, and, and maybe help you get through without having it corrupt your performance. Wow. 
fascinating stuff. Thank you so much, the both of you, for speaking with us and taking the time. Thanks for having us. Christopher Fetch is an assistant professor of neuroscience, and Vikram Chib is an assistant professor of biomedical engineering. They're both joining me from Baltimore, Maryland.